Okay, so what I'm going to try and do is uh, just give you some <laughs> charts and a couple of tables just to paint a little bit of a picture that you already know. Okay, so what this presentation is fundamentally designed to say is this. Africa historically, Sub-Saharan Africa has been fundamental to the global prosperity of the advanced countries. Okay? And Africa had a role to play. It has a role as a raw material producer. We will not allow Sub-Saharan Africa to escape that. Okay? We do everything to keep Sub-Saharan Africa where it is, also impoverished. It's absolutely vital for the prosperity of everyone else. So let's get clear about that. Okay, and this means all the economic structures, all the global institutions, and the economics we teach everyone is all designed to keep Africa exactly where it is. And whether it is Europe or US or now China, it's always the same. We need Africa to be impoverished because we need those raw materials and we need them dirt cheap. Okay, so that's the message. It doesn't mean to say that there's nothing Africans can do. Of course there is. Okay? But this is the opposition that they're fighting. This is what it's about. Because if Africa does do something different, I assure you living standards of all those in Europe and North America and Asia is going to fall. Okay? And that is a big price to pay. I assure you that the West is not going to allow that without a big fight. Okay, so this is what it's fundamentally about. Uh, what I want to show you is how these structures are operating. And why I keep the ideology part there is because we are part of the producers of ideology. At universities and academic institutions, we are complicit in this whole enterprise. Okay, so the job of many Western academics is to convince Africans they have to keep doing what they're doing. Okay? And to show them it's your fault that you're poor. It's not our fault. It's your fault that you're poor. You know? So this is what we do in academic institutions. And I, I want to show that as well. We just start. This is what it's basically about. So you, you know what it's about. But I want to just show you the extent to which Africa is specializing in the production of raw materials and basic agricultural goods. Um, we know the basic forces that have caused this underdevelopment. We, 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 know, we, know, we know the basic forces that have caused this underdevelopment. We know it's colonization, colonization, colonization. Meaning that with all these vast resources being produced, how much are they getting for it? Nothing, 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 nothing. 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 This is a very significant piece of data. Then I just want to show you what has happened to Sub-Saharan Africa because what we know, what we know and from all studies, no country ever develops without manufacturing. Okay, producing raw materials will not take you anywhere. Producing basic agricultural goods will not take you anywhere. And let's have a look at how much manufacturing activity takes place in Sub-Saharan Africa. We can look over the last 15 odd years, 15, 20 years. And we see manufacturing has actually declined. So this figure here is 17% of the total. Most of the rest, when we talk of industry, it includes manufacturing, but the bulk of it is mining, okay? raw material extraction. This is the bulk of it. And here we, th we see actually raw material extraction has stayed the same. What has caused industry to fall is the fall in manufacturing production. This is deliberate because we will never, as Western economists, as Western policymakers, 
we cannot afford to allow Africa to industrialize and start producing manufacturers. We cannot, we cannot, we cannot. We cannot afford to allow Africa to industrialize and start producing manufacturers. Okay, so we will do everything to stop that. We will do everything to stop that. We will do everything to stop that. And I'm going to show you how we actually block that. Sub-Saharan Africa is condemned to this role. Just the supplier of raw materials, not a manufacturer. Okay, so relative to the rest of the world, Sub-Saharan Africa is going to suffer. Again, why? Because it's condemned to this raw material production. This is basically why. How is it condemned to that? Well, the first, the first and most important is the economic structures. After colonization ended, we needed new structures to keep these countries where they were. Okay? And the first of those is aid. Okay? We give them aid. Aid for what? Actually, we give them aid to keep repressive regimes in power. That's all. Okay, we're not giving them aid for much more except a little bit of infrastructure to make sure those raw materials get to the ports and aren't gotten out of the ground. But for the most part, we give repressive regimes money and power and guns to keep that system going. This is what it's fundamentally about. All the hypocrisy about transparency and democracy and bullshit like that, it's all bullshit. You know? And at least the Chinese don't enter into that bullshit. They say, we don't care about the whole political environment, we just give the money. Okay? And it's for raw material extraction, period. Okay? It's the same with all the other raw materials, you see. We're all benefiting, we're complicit. We're actually complicit in this because we will protest and shout out if the situation ever changed. <coughs> okay, now we come to those international institutions. And I must tell you this from the outset. Don't think of them as wicked. IMF, World Bank, WTO. We always think evil creatures. Horrible. It's not. It's just economics. It's economic warfare. It's economic warfare. It's economic warfare. 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 The rich declare war on the poor. It happens everywhere. It happens in a country. The rich control the government. The rich control the government. Of course they do. Of course they do. Of course they do. You really believe you have democracy? Come on. <laughs> You really believe you have democracy? Come on! Come on! Come on! You know, I mean, grow up! This is not about people living in democratic systems. What we have is the rich control. The rich set up these institutions explicitly to control the poor countries. And they don't give them much room for maneuver. But what do these institutions do? What does the IMF do? What is structural adjustment about? It's about making sure countries keep producing what we want them to produce. We make sure they have recurrent balance of payments problems. You notice these countries never get out of balance of payments problems. You notice that? Whereas countries that never took IMF support are always out of balance of payments problems, but the countries that are continuously getting advice and support by the IMF, they're always in balance of payments problems. Why? Because that's the way we keep our stranglehold on them. And that's what we have done. We have done, the IMF and the World Bank. And they've also done something very, very important. And that is, they have destroyed the self-sufficiency of these countries. Colonization started it. Okay? One of the most important things is we destroy food self-sufficiency. Okay? And the World Bank continued it. They forced most countries 
to eliminate all food subsidies and food support. Eliminate all food subsidies and food support. Okay, because once you don't produce your own food, I increase my control <coughs> over you. It's to make sure, especially sub-Saharan African countries, do not escape. Nobody ever told you that aid was designed to actually start the corruption process in the first place. Okay, and we need corruption. We need corruption. We need corruption to make sure you're doing all these things. But now we blame the victim. We blame the victim. We blame the victim. You're poor because it's your fault, basically. And you're poor, stupid, and corrupt, basically. This is the message that we're giving people. You're poor because it's your fault, basically. And you're poor, stupid, and corrupt. We blame the victim. Blame the victim. We blame the victim.